2023 Tesla Semi Update is here. The first customer deliveries of Tesla's electric semi truck will occur in less than a month. This is a moment that has been building for a very long time. There are now just a few weeks left before they begin to arrive for use at a Frito-Lay factory in Modesto, California after the initial unveiling of the Semicon that was scheduled to come in 2019. There are high expectations for the Tesla Semi. For an electric semi-truck, it has some quite astounding specifications. The most competent electric semi-truck on the market has a range of 500 miles with a full load and the ability to recharge 70% of its battery capacity in just 30 minutes. The Tesla Semi's potential is beyond amazing. A sustainable, zero-emissions alternative might take the place of one of the most polluting vehicles on the road, reshaping the trucking industry in the United States and perhaps even globally not to mention the effects of totally autonomous driving in the long run. Additionally, if this vehicle performs as promised, it will present a huge financial potential for the businesses that employ it. For Tesla, their clients, and the rest of us who get the advantage of a cleaner environment and safer roadways, it's a win-win situation. A unique factory close to Tesla's Nevada Gigafactory has built a small number of Tesla semi-vehicles. It's unclear whether it'll be a long-term solution or merely a stopgap measure. Most people had anticipated that the Tesla semi-truck would be produced at the brand new Texas Gigafactory, which would make the most sense as the company's largest production site and a more convenient location, and that is most likely what will happen in the long run. It's entirely possible at Giga Texas is currently a little too busy to adequately handle the semi, though, given that they're simultaneously ramping up for the Model Y and developing tooling for the production of Cybertrucks next year, as well as trying to figure out how to mass-produce the 4680 battery cell. And speaking of batteries, we know that Tesla has decided to continue with their tried-and-true Panasonic-built 2170 cell that is mass-produced at Giga Nevada rather than incorporating the new 46 battery cell into the semi-design. Elon discussed this during the most recent earnings call for Tesla. Even with the trailer completely loaded and the combined weight of 82,000 pounds, he claimed that the semi will still travel the advertised 500 miles without using 4680. Many people who have been following the story appear to have been greatly surprised by that. We had expected that the new semi would use the 4680 cells, Tesla's most advanced battery technology. However, the new battery cells production process hasn't gone as planned, contrary to what Tesla appeared to have anticipated. The 4684 performance is not necessarily for the semi. Both the nickel-based 4680 and 2170 cells have a high energy density. It appears that the two cells have roughly the same volumetric energy density based on the early reports we have received from sources like the Limiting Factor, who performed a complete teardown on early production. Around Sparks, Nevada, several manufacturing versions of semis have been seen testing. A normal transport truck would not be able to accomplish some of the accelerated maneuvers that we've seen at Tesla semis with attached trailers do. With its 20 second 0 to 60 time and a gross combined weight of 82,000 pounds, the Tesla Semi is still being touted. And based on what we understand, that is around three times as fast as a cargo truck that is driven by diesel. Additionally, we can observe how quickly Tesla accelerates. That's because, unlike a traditional truck driver, the driver doesn't have to quickly change through 18 various gear ratios when accelerating. As far as we know, the Tesla Semi doesn't have any gears at all, like all other Tesla vehicles. The motors are connected directly to the wheels after passing through a fixed gearbox. Three electric motors are part of the upgraded semi architecture. Tesla first billed the truck as having four independent motors, but it's likely that eventually they recognized they were over engineering the power. It's not an all wheel drive car because Tesla specifies that it has three separate motors on the rear axles, which would not include the front axle. Probably quite close to the plaid design used by Tesla, two motors on the back axle are anticipated to drive each side separately, followed by one motor on the middle axle that would drive both sides. At 500 miles of range, that would put the battery pack at around the size of one megawatt hour or less of capacity, which is roughly 10 times the energy of a Model S plaid and about 13 times the energy of a Model Y. Tesla claims that this results in them consuming less than 2 kilowatt hours per mile of energy. According to Tesla, a battery can be recharged up to 70% of its capacity in just 30 minutes. The semi needs a very specialized charging station, a mega charger, to accomplish this. Only the Tesla facility in Nevada and the Frito-Lay plant in Modesto, where the semi will start operations, have we seen these actions thus far. 
For their initial delivery, 15 Tesla semis are anticipated for the Lay's factory. Tesla has installed four of the new Mega Charger plugs to handle the 100 vehicles that the parent firm PepsiCo has so far ordered. The factory will eventually become Pepsi's first zero-emissions facility. The Mega Charger's actual peak charging output is something we don't truly know. Naturally, it must be at least one megawatt, but at peak delivery, it will likely be considerably higher because lithium-ion batteries must be charged in a curve with higher power initially and decreased power as the cells get closer to full capacity. The fact that electric vehicles have substantially fewer moving components and require significantly less normal maintenance, such as no oil changes or similar procedures, the trucks will be in maintenance for a shorter period and spend more of their life traveling. We are aware of Elon's lofty target of producing 50,000 trucks annually by 2024, which demonstrates his expectation that an electric semi would be a sought-after good. There are a few significant orders that we are aware of, but it's unclear how many Tesla semis have been ordered. There is PepsiCo, of course, with its 100 trucks. They are one of the bigger ones, but they are not the biggest customers. That group belongs to Pride Group Enterprises, a sizable transport and logistics business with its headquarters in Canada. At least 150 Tesla semis are recorded in their inventory, along with 130 trucks from Walmart Canada, 125 trucks from UPS, and other small orders. There are probably many more orders for Tesla semis than the 800 that we can now track. I've heard it mentioned a few times whether or not we would see the Tesla truck at work transporting Tesla automobiles. Like, why doesn't Tesla employ the Tesla semi if it's so great? However, Tesla's primary goal in producing these is to sell them to customers. If Tesla can just sell the truck for $200,000 and receive the money now, even if it takes a few years to realize savings of $200,000 over a traditional truck, that would be far better for their financial sheep. No matter who uses the product, the net advantage still exists because a regular truck is removed from the road. The most logical thing to happen for the Tesla Semi in the future, if we're talking about what comes next, is for production to move to Giga Texas. And at that time, switching to the 4680 battery cell is probably necessary just for logistical reasons. The semi is now being constructed in Sparks, Nevada. They currently use a battery made in the same location as the 2170 cells made there. The cells don't have to go very far, which is really logical. They would switch to the 4680 cells if they relocated to Giga, Texas, which is where the 4680 will be made once more because it wouldn't have to go very far.